and compromises the ability of biopharmaceutical innovators to capture gains from their successful innovations. But not only do these policies compromise the conditions that America's innovative industries need to thrive in global markets, they also risk introducing a contagion effect that encourages other governments to adopt similar policies to close off their own markets to foreign competition. This has a cascading effect on U.S. companies. The effect is real, and we've already seen it. For example, in September 2013, South Africa's draft national policy on intellectual property proposed using compulsory licensing on innovative medicines, taking a page from India's playbook. And India's implementation of LCRs only perpetuates their growing global use, which affects 5% of global trade, reducing global trade value by close to $100 billion annually. While India's innovation mercantilist policies affect many, many industries, I want to focus the rest of my comments on their impact on the ICT sector, particularly regarding India's onerous compulsory, compulsory registration requirements for ICT products and the PMA. Regarding the first, India's Department of Electronics and Information Technology in 2012 issued a compulsory registration order which requires manufacturers of a wide range of ICT products to submit them for India-based testing, regardless of whether the products have already been tested and certified to an identical standard by internationally accredited laboratories. These requirements were developed with limited industry consultations, are practically unworkable, and be remarkably from global norms. It's estimated that these compulsory registration requirements have caused US and other foreign ICT enterprises to incur millions of dollars in new compliance and liability costs. More concerning, time to market delays and regulatory uncertainty continue to jeopardize billions of dollars of exports and potential sales. Moreover, India is now looking to expand the scope of these requirements and there is fear that they will become the model for testing and certification for security and other up and coming regulations. As for the PMA, in July 2013, India's government announced that it would review and suspend its PMA requirement as applied to private sector uh, procurements. ITIF applauds the Indian government for recognizing the concerns voiced by foreign governments, investors, and the international ICT community and rescinding the PMA's application to private sector procurements. Nevertheless, the PMA's continuing application to Indian government and SOE state-owned enterprise procurement activity threatens to significantly distort India's ICT market. The PMA will still impact at least one quarter of India's ICT market, and it will harm US ICT enterprises and ICT production. In fact, if India's PMA were to be fully realized, with India achieving the goal expressed by the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India in its 2011 Telecom Equipment Manufacturing Policy, of having 80% of India's demand for telecommunications equipment be met through domestically manufactured products by 2020, with at least 50% of that production being met by Indian products, then ITIF estimates that foreign imports of ICT products to serve Indian government procurement would decline by up to $6.5 billion in the year 2020. <coughs> ITIF further estimates that US-based ICT production to serve Indian government procurement markets would fall by an estimated $1.7 billion, costing the United States at least 10,500 jobs annually. It's also worth noting that many US ICT services firms provide managed solutions that depend on hardware as the basis for offering ICT services. If domestic hardware is required, it will compromise the ability of US firms to offer managed <coughs> services to the Indian market. In conclusion, ITIF would like to stress that it would like to see India's economy grow at a very robust rate, returning to the economic miracle of 10% growth it once achieved. But the way to get there is by encouraging market-based competition, embracing an across-the-board productivity strategy for the country, and investing in the innovation potential of India's economy, not resorting to the use of trade-distorting innovation mercantilist policies. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, that concludes direct testimony from this panel. Thank you.